What's up y'all, it's your girl Dr. Nina and over the past year, peel off masks have really become a big part of my regimen at least one to two times a month. They're great for anti-aging, cleaning out blackheads, ridding yourself of acne scars, cleaning out the pores and exfoliation and hopefully today you'll see some really cool things that you can try but as I always tell you, if you're having severe issues, make sure you go and see the doctor. But I'm gonna show you three different ones, one for high level, medium and low. Depending on the type of skin issues you might be dealing with and you can see what I do and see what you might want to try everything I talk about can be found down below in the information section make sure you thumbs up this video if you like it comment share and subscribe to this channel and also my vlog channel make sure that you come back on all Thursdays and some Sundays for video uploads and also be sure to turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload before I try any new products I always try to test them out on a hidden area of the body and also on the area or closer to the area where I'll actually be using them this just makes sure that I'm not going to have an allergic reaction and I usually try to do that at least 24 to 48 hours in advance just to see how my body reacts. Before I do a mask to make sure I'm getting all the benefits from it, I try to make sure that I exfoliate. So I'm going to be using my Glow Spin, which is all new from Vanity Planet that they brought out with the new two speeds and also three detachable brush heads. But I'm using it to focus on that bottom area of my face and my T-zone where I break out the most, but I'm using the softest brush head because I'm just wanting to make sure that the surface of the skin is really good and clean so that these masks give me the maximal benefits and you guys know for years I've used plain paper towels to blot my face dry which leaves just a little bit of moisture but I've done this for years because I don't like the bacteria that can be deposited on my face from even plain clean towels so that's what I've done and it's worked well for me I'm gonna leave this link down below if you want to try out the glow spin down below in the information section but also I'm giving one away so check the information section on all the details on how to win. The mask I'm going to be focusing on today is my Milk and Glycerin mask, which I love because when I am having big problems with those good old blackheads and want to smooth that skin really nicely, this works amazingly. So the glycerin, the whole milk, and the gelatin all work together. The glycerin is amazing for soothing skin and locking in moisture, while the whole milk has lactic acid, which heals those dark marks and also relieves even sunburn. The gelatin is only used to help this mask stick to your face so you get the benefits of the glycerin in the milk. I use whole milk because it has whole fats which are really good for your skin and also a lot of lactic acid. So it's gonna help with soothing that skin. Once you've brought your milk to a light boil because you don't want it to burn, you're gonna make sure you start to slowly pour in that gelatin. I like to do it in segments so that I don't have too much to mix in. And plus, if you do it too fast, you'll end up with this hard, clumpy, like jello-like thing. Take this message from an OG. I have done this mask several times and it's going to benefit you to do it slowly and then also let it cool to room temperature. You don't want it too cold or too hot. Too cold will leave you with this globby mess. It has happened to me before and it ain't no fun to get it off your face. Now when it's perfectly at room temperature then it glides on easily and it's in a nice thin layer. When it's too hot it burns your face. I try to make sure I get it in a really nice thin layer in all those especially problem areas because this is going to help pull out those blackheads as you've noticed I've sped it up but usually I do this pretty slowly because you don't want it in your hair you don't want it too close under your eyes you don't want it near your eyebrows so be very careful because it will <laughs> pull a lot of stuff out including your edges okay I have a lot of blackheads in this area and poor problems so that's why I'm focused there and after about five minutes of letting it settle I go ahead and fill in any areas where I feel like there's holes or areas that could use just a little bit more of the mask and that's okay and then I let it dry for about 20 minutes and I do like the little smile test now if you smile it and you find that it hurts then it's time to go ahead and remove it Thoroughly. This is not <laughs> it. Fun to take off. Y'all ask me about hair removal. Baby, you do this? <laughs> All that hair be gone off your face. Do you feel me? No, y'all can't feel this. It's so funny. It hurts yet it feels good. I don't know how to explain that. Woo! Y'all hear that? Listen.
every hair I owned on my lip is probably not alive anymore. Now though I have sped this up, I am still pulling gently. It took me a little while and it's good to take your time. You don't wanna rip your hair out. <laughs> you don't wanna rip your face off, none of that. We are not trying to damage the skin. We're trying to get good benefits from the mask. So make sure you take your time and basically try and make sure that you're pulling upward so your skin stays going up. Except on your forehead, it's almost impossible. If you find you got some in your hair or in your eyebrows, just rinse that area with lukewarm water until it comes out. Don't rip it out. Look at that. First off, this look like leather face. This got a lot of facial hair out. I don't know if y'all can see that. But here in the nose area and around like my cheeks where I get blackheads, where's the biggest problem? Boom, baby. Look at all them blackheads in there. All of that has been pulled out. I told y'all the mighty force of God was happening. This probably could be a very good option for hair removal. When I'm now. done, I'll go ahead and tone with a little bit of witch hazel. I use my Kiehl's eye cream and my Renewed Hope in a jar to go ahead and make sure that my moisture game is on point because your face will be a little drier than normal. Now, my face feels very soft. I will say that soft and smooth and my pores look a bit less noticeable. Where my nose normally gets big blackheads, it looks really good and smooth. So I love this DIY stuff, especially if it like gets in your hair or something like that. It's easy to rinse out, it's easy to get off. And so I think that it's really worth the time and effort, especially if you're only doing it about once a week, if you have severe issues. Like I really like this mask for specifically severe times that I have really bad blackheads or dark marks on my face. Now this next one is the green tea and aloe vera mask, which I really love because the green tea gives your skin antioxidants and it helps to smooth and clear the skin while the aloe vera adds to put that moisture back in the skin. I usually only use this mask when I'm having moderate issues. So not as severe as the last one. This one is a little less powerful, a little easier to deal with and a little simpler to put together. So all you need is water. You're gonna boil it up. I put in a tea bag, I put in my green tea, Tea. I let it steep for a while. I return this back to the water, add in the aloe vera, mix that down really well until it's good and smooth. And then I start to add in my gelatin, just like you saw with the milk mass. I mix this one up pretty much the same, slow and steady. So in segments, but then I just let it cool down to room temperature and it's ready to go. This is the mask I showed you guys on my patch test. And like I said, it's only for when I have like those moderate issues and I can use this one a little bit more often than I can the first one because it's not nearly as powerful as you see. This one is the lightest option of the three and it is a non-gelatin method. So it uses cucumber and glycerin and tissue paper. This one seems to really help to soothe dry patches and it calms down the inflammation because of the cucumber. The glycerin also helps to put that moisture back in. The tissue paper is really just used to help you be able to peel it just a little bit. So this one is for more sensitive skin. So when I'm having some irritation, that's when I use this one, when I'm not trying to peel a lot. I add just a splash of water to the cucumber and I blend it down. That's all I did here and I add in the glycerin and then I take my brush and I paint that on. You want a nice thick layer so then when you do add your tissue paper, it has something to stick to and dry to so you have a mild peeling effect. And I let this dry completely for about 20 minutes. You wanna be very careful to peel it off slowly and this one's gonna come off easier anyway because it does and have the gelatin and then it usually leaves my skin feeling pretty soft after I rub off and get off all the remnants of the mask. Thank you so much for being with me today guys. I hope you learned a lot. Make sure that you comment, share this video with someone who can use it and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching guys. Beautiful brown baby doll. Peace. Thanks so much for all the love and support over on my new website. If you haven't already, go ahead and check it out and join me for new ways to interact with me, giveaways and prizes, weekly emails, as well as my free eight day supernatural video course, which is free when you sign up.